Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Hi and welcome to this video. Now we are at the first self quiz of solving logarithmic equations. As always, I caution people to not just jump right into these self quizzes, but make sure you've gone through the sequence here and looked at some of my other videos in this video series under the same title. We talked about being able to solve equations by looking for equal expressions and then using the log properties to be able to come up with an equation. Um, writing things in exponential form and we had lots of problem sets problems that I asked you to try and then I would go over each one of them in detail and now we're at the first self quiz so here we go grab a piece of paper and let's give them a try alright in this video we're gonna be looking at these six problems okay I want you to take a look at the way that these equations are written and uh, really pay attention to the structure of what log expressions are being equal to each other and see if there's a place where you can write an equation and solve. So good luck, pause the video and let me uh, explain when you get back. Alright number one let's see how you did here. Now we have log base 3 of that expression equals log base 3 of that expression so those expressions have to be equal don't they? So now I can write my equation 5x equals 2x plus 3. I should be able to subtract 2x from each side. And so now it's 3x equals 3. Divide each side by 3 of course and that would be 1. Alright that's a good warm-up. Now let's look at number 2. Again I have the same base in this case log 12 of that expression equals log base 12 of that expression. So let's go ahead and make those expressions equal and write an equation and we will solve. So we're going to assume that you've fairly comfortable with, um, gotten fairly comfortable with these algebra steps and it's just a multi step equation. First of all, we're going to subtract 5n from each side and so now we have 7 minus 9n equals 8. Um, let's go ahead and subtract 7 from each side. And that will give us negative 9n equals 1. We're going to divide each side by negative 9 and that's why the answer is there as shown. Okay, I hope you're doing all right. Number three, again, this expression is going to be equal to that expression, but notice we have r squared. Ah, so we're going to have a quadratic to deal with, which just adds an extra step, no big deal. But let's go ahead and write out our equation. r squared plus 4 equals 8r minus 3. Now because it's a quadratic, let's get everything over on one side and make it equal to 0, and that way we can try to factor it. So we're going to subtract 8r on this side. I should have left an, another space in there but we'll line things up a little bit later. Let's add 3 to each side because of course we're making 0 over there. And a little messy, I'm kind of compressing two steps in one row there but we should have r squared, um, there's my r term there, minus 8r and here we have 7 plus 7 equals 0. Alright, then of course we need to be able to factor that. So let's see if I can squeeze this then. I know we're going to have an R and an R. And we need to find factors of 7 that somehow combine to give me my middle term. Well, obviously because those are two, um, because that's a positive 7, we can have a minus there and a minus there. And a 7, of course, is prime, so it's only a 1 and a 7 factors there. And let's see, will that make my middle term correct? So uh, that's negative 1r multiplied there, negative 7r. Yep, 
that'll work. So now that we've set that binomial equal to zero, r must be one, positive one. And if we set that equal to zero, that will give us r equals seven. Okay, now you should always double check, make sure that we have a positive expression there because we can't take a logarithm of a negative expression. And we have that right there. So it's gonna work in both cases, so there we go. Positive one, positive seven. Number four, also a quadratic. That expression equals to that expression. Um, let's get everything over on one side. So I'm going to add 2m to each side, and I'm going to add 1 on each side. All right, let's see what this mess simplifies to here. We have our m squared. Let's put the next term, uh, the 2m term comes next. And then that will be negative 48 equals 0. All right, I'm going to try to squeeze this in here. So when we factor this, we're going to get m minus 6, m plus 8. So that is going to give me a solution set of two numbers. And let's see why one of them doesn't work. Well, here this is going to give me a positive 6, isn't it? And this will give me my negative 8. And here's an extra step you need to worry about. If you substitute positive 6 in right there, that'll be 36 take away 49. That's going to give me a negative amount, right? And you cannot have that with a logarithmic expression there. So that is not going to work. But test the negative 8. Negative 8 squared is going to be 64 minus 49. That, that's positive. That'll be fine. And this is negative 2 times negative 8, so it's positive 16 minus 1. So it's going to work in both places. Negative 8 is my only possible solution. For these final two problems, 5 and 6, you'll find these are a little bit easier. Basically, we're going to write these in exponential form. So 9 is your base, 3 is your exponent, equals n and 9 to the third power is going to be my answer, of course, 729. 9 times 9 times 9. All right, number 6. Log base 12 of x equals negative 1. So 12 is your base. Negative 1 is your exponent. And that's what x is going to be. Well, obviously, knowing what we know about negative exponents, that negative 1 is going to bump the 12 down to the bottom. That's 1 over 12 to the first, or 1 twelfth. All right, now in the next self quiz video, we're going to be getting a little bit more in the properties and it'll be a little more of a challenge for you. So look for that. Good luck. Thanks for watching this video. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.